we have a choice of our perspective. That is the one thing. We're going to get rejected. It's not going to be our fault. We're going to mess up. We're going to fail, especially if we're trying. We're putting ourselves out there and we're being seen and we're trying things we've never done before. I'm I'm going to let you know you're, right, you're listening right now. You're going to fail. But what do you want your relationship with that failure to be? Because we can decide that. And for me, I've failed enough now and I've gotten enough reps in, failure reps, rejection reps, to look back and understand and see that every single time I failed and every time I've gotten rejected, it's taught me something that I needed to learn to be better next time. And so if we can look back and connect the dots looking backwards and look at all those times that we failed and ask ourselves, what did I learn from that failure? And how did I bring it into something else that actually changed the game for me and made me better at what I do? And we can always remind ourselves that that failure really is for us. I hate using that term, but that failure always is. Every massive success I've ever had has been birthed from a failure of some kind, every single one. And I tell a bunch of the stories in the book. I'll tell you a really quick one right here, just to give your your listeners some hope, because this was a really big, bad one that actually birthed something really spectacular. Um, When I first partnered with my husband, Chris, when you met Chris, he was doing events without me. Like We were not partners in business. I was his girlfriend. He was running these events called Unfair Advantage Live. And they connected entrepreneurs to the media, taught them how to pitch the media. It was awesome. And I used to show up and watch and be in the audience and be like, wow, I want to be on stage. Maybe one day I could do that. And eventually we became business partners and we decided to build Super Connector Media together. And so we started doing these events together. And the first time I ever did an event with Chris, I was petrified because my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, he was the face of the company. He was a brilliant speaker. I'd never done this before. Who was I? I was his girlfriend. I was like, and if you look at the pictures of this event, I'm standing like five feet behind him. I'm so nervous. I have such imposter syndrome. You can see it all over me. I'm like, I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to say anything because I felt like I wasn't good enough. And I was really suffering with all of the symptoms of fear, all of them. And you could see it. And there was a point in which Chris was going to pitch his offer, his back-end offer for this event, right? That's how you make money at events. You sell a back-end course. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to pitch. How hard can pitching be? Little did I know that pitching is definitely a skill set that people work on for years. I didn't know. I was like, I could do it. I'm an actor. I'll read the slides. I'll pitch the product. No big deal. This is great. I got this. I go on stage to to pitch this thing. Everything is riding on this, on this launch at this event. All right. I was so bad, so bad, so much so that everybody in the room was like still and looking at me. I tripped. I couldn't read the slides. I didn't know what the offer was. People were asking me questions and I couldn't answer them. It was so bad. And at the end of it, the whole thing was like, I was supposed to say, all right, everybody that wants to sign up, come up on stage. We've got a gift bag for you. And I was like, Okay, everyone that wants to buy, come on and get a gift bag. No one moved. Like, silence. I'm like, Chris is looking at me like, oh my God, everyone on the team is there. They're, they can't even, like the room is silent. It's terrible. I, I feel, I've ruined the event. So I walk backstage and at lunch it happens and everyone's going to lunch and I'm sitting there and I'm crying and I'm like, I don't even know what to do. What, what do I do here? This is the most epic failure ever. Like in, in my first steps of my entrepreneurial journey and partnering with my boyfriend, I'm mortified. And I'm like, I have two options. I can either leave and never come back. Okay. That seems pretty doable. I, I could do that. Or I could figure out a way to shift my energy and change this and make it better. And I can either be resilient or I can give up. What do I want my relationship with the situation to be? And how do I want to feel when this is all over? And so the only way that I know how to shift my energy is to move and to dance. And at that time, these events had no dancing, no music. But I went up to the DJ in the back of the room and I was like, when we come back from lunch, I want you to play this one song and I want you to play it really, 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 really loud. And I want you to just keep playing it until I tell you to stop. And he's like, okay. And he, you know, he just saw me bomb. So he was like, I, I'm fine, fine, I'll listen to you, whatever. So all, all right, I take the microphone. I'm like, I have nothing to lose. I, like, I, I don't have anything else that I can do. And I'm like, okay, play the music. And he starts playing the music. I'm like, all right, everybody get on your feet. And I tell, and the whole room all of a sudden stands up and we get everybody dancing. And people are dancing on the tables and they're dancing on the chairs. And they're dancing on the stage. And everyone is just losing their mind, having the best time ever, especially me, more importantly. And I was able to get myself out of my own way and be real Jen, the girl that would dance, and that's like my superpower, and stop being so scared and trying to be like behind my boyfriend and took center stage and started to be seen. 
And what ended up happening as a result of that dance party and me being resilient and not giving up was we ended up making over seven figures at that event because we won the room back after that dance party. because Everyone was so hyped and so energized and so ready and so bought in. And then I promised myself I would never, ever, ever not be able to sell from stage ever again. And so I became one of the best and I studied my ass off and I learned how to do it. So that was a gift. And now one of our superpowers at our super connector events, every single one of them, whether they're virtual or they're in person, we do dance parties and it's what makes us special. And it's one of our like special sauces that we always do no matter what. And so that failure birthed so many amazing gifts and it gave me my confidence back in the form of, I always think of that, like. Whenever I fail miserably, there's always an answer. There's always a pathway forward. And usually that pathway forward will give me lessons that I needed to learn so badly and also wins for the future that I didn't even know existed and wouldn't have if I didn't fail. 